Well, hey everybody, welcome to another Photoshop User TV. I'm Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys here with Corey Barker, and we are brought to you by Kelby One, the fine makers of whoosh, Photoshop so User Magazine. That's right, you can get 10 delicious issues of Photoshop goodness by Photoshop User Gurus and other folks. How do you like that? Just broad A who's terms. who oh, of who's Photoshop who? and photography. All right here. Right in that magazine. Yes, and that's what we think of it. There we have it. <laughs> All right. Well, so I'm Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys here, and I'm joined by my lovely co host and just overall sexy individual, Corey Boom Boom Barker. How are you doing, Corey? Uh, how are you? I'm doing all right. Very happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, and uh, we're going to just jump right in and give you a couple quick tips that we can get you on your Photoshop way. And I'm going to start it off. I, I talked about a little bit last week about uh, the Creative Cloud um, market, and I wanted to show you another example of how you need to be taking advantage of this stuff because it's got some amazing resources for you there. And if you're part of the Creative Cloud, they're all just sitting there waiting for you for free. And so what I do is I say, make sure you go over and check out the, the Creative Cloud Market. It's right here. You can download the Creative Cloud app for your desktop. And in it, you can see what all is going on. Make sure you're up to date on all your uh, programs. But also, you've got the market right here. And if you go down, you're going to find something that you like. And let's say I choose something like that. I like the vector images there, and it brings it up. Uh, but the thing is, you want to check, and if it it shows you what kind of file it is. And if you look right over here, it's called an SVG file. And so <laughs> you go, well, I like that, but how am I going to use it? So I go ahead and click on download, and I say I want to put it in my library. And if you're not sure what SVG stands for, it stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. I sound pretty knowledgeable about that, but I had to look Super it up earlier. Super Vegetable Garden. Yes. Basically, it's another version of vector images. And so with that being said, What's going to happen, the easiest way to take care of this is you're just going to now go over to your files. Super go, villain grade school. You're going to go over to open you know, in Finder, and you're just going to click on it. I'm ignoring you, Corey. And so now we just need to find it in here in our Finder. I'm going to open this up a little bit more, and let's find out where it went. Of course, they always hide. There it is right there. Now, here's the key. If you right-click, you can choose what to open it with. And the easiest thing to do, the default, is going to be Adobe Illustrator. You click on that, and it's going to open it up. And Sizzling course, vegan grapes. <laughs> no? Super variable <laughs> goobers. I can do it, too. All right, so that's the easy way to do it. You just come over here. Well, there's Photoshop. Now I'm going to grab Illustrator, and I can click on that. And now all I've got to do, look at that. Everything but that one pair of pliers, for some reason, Whoever created this did not like that pair of pliers. Be cool, so that it, stands alone. It did not like to grab. So I'm just going to grab all these, and now I'm going to just drag it over into Photoshop. And the great thing is that it brings it over as a vector image, and I can, I can rescale it, and it's not going to lose any of its uh, resolution. And that's why it's really nice to have as a vector image. It's not going to lose its resolution. However, we do realize that a lot of you out there might not use Illustrator a lot or might not even have it on your computer. There is a workaround for you. And I want to show that to you because uh, these images are still very useful for you. So what you're going to do is you're going to come back up. You click on this. And when you go to open your folder and you go to market downloads, you go find it again. And it was right up here hiding. Look at that. Sneaky over there. Grab that. It does not want to grab. Get over there. There we go. All right, so what you're going to want to do is when you right click on it, come over here, and down below it's going to say Creative Cloud. And you're going to want to do this and view it on the website. When you do that, it uploads onto its own web page. And like I said, this is a workaround. The ideal way to do it is through Illustrator. But if you don't want to work with Illustrator, you don't have it, this is the way that you can work with it. And now when it pops up on its own page like this, you just want to go to Actions and hit Download again. I know a little convoluted, but when you hit that, now it will let you choose the different types of files that you can uh, do here. And I've never downloaded it as an ASE, but I will download it as a PNG. You could also do it as a JPEG. Uh, but if you do it with a PNG, what that'll mean is it'll have a transparent background. So now if I do download, so then you're going to find it. Once it show it in the finder, it, it's right up here. And you can do it a couple ways. But the easiest way is drag your file right into Photoshop. And it pops open. And there you go. You have your, your pocket pictograms right there. And it's a nice um, 
transparent file that you can take, drag on, whatever. Now the one side to this, the downside to this is, is it's not, uh, it's not a vector, so it can't scale up and down. You've only got that limited size, but at least you've got them there, transparent background that you can play around with. Uh, and it's a little convoluted, but you can get there. Uh, I hope that makes sense. And what's funny is I was sharing this and I was doing this, and then all of a sudden Corey said, well, why don't you do it a different way? Mm. I did. <laughs> yes, you did. And, and he <laughs> said to go into your library folder and, and open it up in there. And inside of Photoshop, yes. <laughs> so what happens is you come over to Photoshop. Uh, Corey's joining us. Come into libraries, and if you kick on to libraries, it's now going to sync with your, your Creative Cloud there, and you can drag it in there. What we found out is if you do it either way, it's going to be the same size mm -hmm. no matter which way you do that. So just like in Photoshop, there are about five different ways to do it. You can get there if you don't have Illustrator. You just have to do a couple workarounds, but it's definitely worth figuring it out so that you can have access to these resources. And it, I mean, simply put, it's, it's the browser route or from within the program. Right. So yes, you can go to the browser, download it to your system and have it, but again, that libraries folder, and this is something a lot of people tend to forget about uh, as recent developments in Photoshop, is this libraries panel is allows you to access not just your own elements that you have saved to your Creative Cloud, but the, a lot of those marketplace elements. So, so there's brushes and other elements you can access in here and, and bring right into Photoshop via that library's panel. So Just sure. drag and drop right from the library. Drag and drop right yep. there. All right, let us take a quick break. We're going to talk about a few more things. I've got a little video and animation trick I'm going to share with you and many more things to come. Stay with us. We'll be right back. MPix Pro, the full-service online photography lab, helping you grow your business with pro-quality photo products and stellar services. Get started at MPixPro.com. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. We want to talk to you a little bit about who brings you this fine show, and that is KelbyOne.com. Uh, myself, Pete, we're all trainers at Kelby One, among some of the best in photography and Photoshop and Lightroom training in the world, right here at KelbyOne.com. You can check it out. You can actually get a preview of what's going on on the page. And it's, I don't know, I, I could talk about this all day, about what, what goes on in this site. I mean, Well, just... and the funny thing is, before we ever worked here, it was like, this was mm -hmm. where we lived as well. We mm -hmm. got so much training through the Photoshop training and the photography training. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a place, it's got some of the best content you'll find in the world. We're, we're true believers of it, even though they, they force us at <coughs> one point to say it. We love it. Uh, you definitely need to check it out. It's not going to cost you anything to go over there, check it out. It's kelby1.com, some of the best training you can find. And new right classes there. are added every week, so so there's um, not something new to discover every single week, and there's just hours, hours of training. I'm, I'm, I'm talking oodles, again. oodles, oodles of oodles training. of training. So be sure to check it out, KelbyOne.com, and find out everything there is to be offered right there. Yeah, we offer little tips and stuff for you here, but we have full-length classes over there that you can find out all kinds of stuff. Like whatever Corey's going to talk about now, I see a surfer in animation. We're going to take talk it away, about Corey. Video. There are so many things Photoshop does. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I can talk about 3D to death, of course, because I love 3D and I do a lot of really cool stuff with it. But what a lot of people forget is that Photoshop does animation and video pretty well. Now, I'm just going to show you kind of some little simple things you can do with some video clips. Now, here I have a just a short video clip of this surfer, just you know, just surfing along the waves. The camera's just kind of following along and everything like that. So. Maybe we want to take that and just spice it up a little bit. Maybe it's a little video you want to put on your website or something like that. And you don't really want to go through the massive learning curve or something like Premiere, even though the Premiere is actually a bit easier to use than it once was. But if you wanted to do some simple tricks, little mo um, motion tricks in here, what I'm going to do first is, let's bring up my layers panel. And you can see that it's a video layer as indicated by the small icon right here. Now what I'm going to do is actually contain this in a smart object. So I'm going to right click on it and choose Convert to Smart Object. So no matter what any changes I make, um, it'll be contained within that object there. So I'm actually going to bring this out of the video group and put it above that video group layer there. And I can still scroll through here and see that the video plays. Looks pretty good. However, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a copy of this layer. But I don't want to make a normal copy in the sense of just doing Command J and duplicating the layer. Because it's a smart object, it will be linked to this other one. And I want to do an effect to the other to the duplicate layer I don't want to happen to the uh, original layer. So what you're going to do is go and right click on it and you'll choose instead of, or where was it? Or duplicate layer. Yeah, you didn't, instead of doing that, we're going to choose new smart object via copy. Now what that does is it makes a copy of that smart object layer. However, 
it is now self-contained. So if I go inside of this smart object layer, there's the original video clip. What I'm going to do to this is simply add an adjustment layer, and we're going to do invert. And we've got now a negative of that video clip. So I'm going to close that and save the changes. So there I've got my video clip of the inverted version on top, and then we've got the normal version below. Now, what I want to happen is I want big letters to kind of scroll across, <laughs> across the screen. And uh, inside the letters, you'll see the negative uh, video, but outside the letters, you'll see the normal video below. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set a text layer, and we'll just go ahead and call this surfing because that's what it is. That's crazy. And I'm going to make this really, really bold text. So I'm going to use uh, the Swiss black. Oh, and I'm going to bring the tracking a little bit just so the, the letters are kind of overlapping like that. And let's scale this up. So I'm actually going to make my window small and scale this really big. Maybe increase that tracking just a little bit more. There we go. All right, so got my text going on there. Now I'm going to position the text layer between those two video layers right there. And all I'm going to do is just clip that video layer inside of my text by just holding on my Option key and clicking right there. And now you can see my text is masking the element there. Now we need to animate the text layer. So I'm going to go here and let's have the text start you know, a little bit, a little ways in here. So I'm actually going to position it there and just close that clip in there. And we'll say we'll have it end somewhere around here. So at this point, I'm going to twirl down and reveal my uh, keyframe properties that I can animate here. So I'm going to start this off to the side. I'm actually going to hold the shift key down and drag this all the way off this way, off to, just right of view. And we'll click on the transform button here. And let's move our playhead to the end of that clip. And then now I'm going to drag that, again, holding the shift key down, drag this text over. It's going to spell out surfing as it goes across and then exits the other side. Notice in my timeline, it went ahead and created that new keyframe because we've changed the position of that element. So if I close in my workspace here and bring this back to the beginning, and we'll go ahead and do a quick render. Now it's going to be a little jumpy at first. Let's zoom in here a little bit. It'll be a little jumpy at first because it's rendering the frames, but now we're going to see that text animate in, and then the negative aspect is going to reveal itself inside the text. So we're pretty much still seeing the full video clip, but we're actually getting a cool reveal of the title, if this was a, a show about surfing or whatever like that. And it's going, to, it's going to play that through, and you can see the little green bar at the top here. And it's going to finish the render here in just a minute. I'm just going to keep talking with dun, dun, empty dun, dun, words dun, dun, until it dun, 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 finishes the render. Dun, dun, so dun, Pete, dun, how are you? Dun, Everything going good? All right, so there, dun, 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 dun. All right, so now it's going to play through full motion. Wait for it. Wait for it. And there we go. So now there is the surfer and then the text. La, 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 la. If everybody had an now, ocean. Now, obviously that text probably is working a little bit slow. So if I wanted to speed that up, I could just take this keyframe and just drag it closer together. So the simple rule about keyframing is the closer the keyframes are together, the faster the animation moves. The further apart they are, the slower the animation goes. So now if we do that, I'm not going to do the full render again, but we'll just kind of take this through. And what you're going to see is the text is going to travel a little bit faster. And there it is. It's coming a little bit faster. So there, it's, that's a little bit more in pace with what I'm going for. And then I can just go and do some more fine tuning on that. But that is just simply three layers and a few keyframes right here inside Photoshop, bringing it to a broadcast level animation that you could render out and use in a video clip because you could certainly go to file, go to export, and render video. No, not export to Illustrator. <laughs> but rather render video, and then you'll have all the familiar export features. You're familiar with video, um, exporting it out as an, um, a QuickTime or H.264, or whatever you want to do that, and you can set your size right there so you have the full input of video and the export of video all out of Photoshop. Well, and I think the two main things that most people uh, need to remember, the, the gotchas in there, are to make sure you, you de-link that copy. Make sure right. it's not, mm -hmm. not just another copy of the smart object, because when you inverted the top one, the bottom would invert as well. So if they're no longer yeah. linked together, 
Well, and in fact, I can take you a few, yeah, few, seconds, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. few seconds to show you that. So let's go back to the beginning. If I make just a simple duplicate of that smart object layer without making it a via, via a copy, and I go in there and I do the invert, let's actually open that smart object up, and we'll add the invert layer. I'll close it, save the changes. Look what it did. It also affected the original one. So those are linked smart objects. So you need, again, yes, like you're pointing out, need to make sure that those are separated elements in there as uh, doing the smart object via copy. And the other thing that a lot of people, I know it kind of freaks them out at first, the whole idea of clipping layers together, having that text layer and using that as the mask for the layer mm -hmm. above it. it. Those two things, if you can get those in your head, it's really going to give you a lot of opportunities to do some neat stuff, because that was beautiful, high quality stuff he did in Photoshop that could go anywhere. Matter of stand minutes, up to matter anything. minutes, yes, yep. indeed. So It's a great tip. All right, so we have another Peach Pit deal, I see. Yeah, we do. Uh, Peach Pit deal. If you go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1, you're going to find out what the e-deal is for this week. And this week, it is Urban Exploration by Todd Sipes. And uh, Urban Exploration, Urban Photography, Grunge Photography is really big these days. And he's got a great book helping you understand a little bit more about editing, shooting, doing all that for Grunge Photography. If you want to get 40% off the retail price, you just simply need to add Kelby1 in the coupon code LB area. LB. I don't know what the LB is, but <laughs> if you're Kelby1 in the coupon code area, you get 40% off that book this week. Thank you so much for Peach Pit doing that e-deal for us. And wait, there's more. Huh. If you order now, get a free set of wind chimes. No wind chimes. We do have another book to give away this week. What do we have? Look at that beautiful cover. Well, Corey, it's Natural Newborn Baby Photography, A Guide to Posing, Shooting, and Business by Robin Long. Now, I wonder, what about people with a C-section? Does that still count? Oh, Since please. it's natural newborns. But uh, anyway, great book. If you're into child photography, newborn photography, great tips, great ideas for you how to set things up and get some great... Uh, shots of newborns uh, and includes the business side of doing it. It's a great book by Robin Long. Make sure that you try to get it by going over to a beautiful way of uh, sucking the beauty out of that moment. By the way. <laughs> but what you will do is go to kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest. Go here to the menu and choose Photoshop user TV into your name and your email. That is all that is needed to enter to win the book, but we would love for you to go down to the comment section and let us know what you'd like to see. If there's an issue you've been running into, a problem, or just something cool you want to see us do on the show, that is where you'll put it because we do check these comments and we want to know yep. what you want to see here on the show. So be sure to do that for us. Yep. Well, and there you go. Guys, you <laughs> stuck with us. Thank you so much for being here. We will have another show for you next week. Make sure you come back and check us out. Until then, take care and see you later. Happy 3D. Whee! <laughs>